so as we think about how our clients benefit from working with a firm that has expertise both in distressed M&A and healthy M&A, it's helpful sometimes to just look at real life examples. And so uh, if you think about a company that is the proverbial melting ice cube, meaning it is falling apart quickly, and if you don't get to a transaction fast, there won't be anything left to sell, um, I would give you as an example of that $80 million a year um, sports nutrition company founded by a famous bodybuilder from the 80s. And it was uh, really falling apart when we got there, um, so much so that wasn't even retained yet. He handed me a phone that he'd already dialed and asked me to talk to his protein supplier to uh, get them to ship protein because they, they had not been paid and weren't shipping product. And at the same time, he informed me that retailers were taking his product off the shelf and giving that space to other brands because they didn't believe he could produce any longer. So that is a melting ice cube. In that case, we had to very quickly get the offer. So we hit the market within a week with a sim and a teaser, um, no real time to do a deep dive or research. And we got our initial bids in about four weeks. And what that allowed us to do is give the market confidence that this business would survive, get the protein supplier to ship, get customers to believe that they were going to continue to get product, get employees, frankly, to stick around, and um, may maybe most importantly, uh, get the secure creditor to put in additional funds because they could see the light at the end of the tunnel. So then over the next four weeks, we generated additional bids, um, and we got to a level that uh, paid off the secure debt, and we then had a bid off among four bidders from four different continents uh, at which the price more than doubled and is able to get 30% equity in the buying entity. So doubled the price, got him 30% equity and an ability to claw back uh, additional equity after the closing. So a great success story where speed was key. If we had waited one more week, literally there would be nothing left to sell. Conversely, when we represented Gourmet Express, a manufacturer of frozen skillet meals, there really was a healthy underlying company, and we viewed this as a diamond in the rough. $50 million in revenue, good margins, but hampered by some internal litigation between partners. And so we were able to take a little bit more of a thoughtful, intentional approach to who the buyers might be, why they would have interest, uh, and really sell the value of the cash flow and the growth of the company. And so. Um, although we still ran a very fast process, it wasn't a bankruptcy, we were able to draw in some private equity buyers and uh, were able to achieve a very competitive um, auction where not only were all the debts in the bankruptcy paid off, but shareholders got $18 million in equity. And uh, two of the three shareholders decided to stay involved in the business and continued to operate in one case as the CEO, whereas the third shareholder took his money in a non-compete and uh, went on to the golf course. Um, more recently, uh, we represented a company in the bedding industry, bedding and furniture industry, um, that was facing some distress really related to COVID and a disruption in the supply chain uh, combined with some litigation. But we thought selling the company in the COVID environment was a mistake and we were able to use relationships um, across the firm to bring uh, different kinds of options to the table, including an option that allowed um, the shareholder to, to uh, maintain his equity, actually to gain equity, become a 100% shareholder, and uh, to refinance the debt and allow the company to move forward. And it's, uh, as we come out of COVID, doing very well, growing rapidly, actually looking to make acquisitions now that it's properly funded. So. Those are three deals on the distress spectrum that really deserve different approaches, different results, different um, structured transactions. And uh, the mix of people on this team that know private equity groups, that know lenders, that know distress buyers, and that understand how to think like a CEO of both a buyer and a seller really allows us to bring value that I think is above and beyond what you would typically see in a distressed situation.